Hello and welcome back to Artisan Electrics for another episode of 8 at 8. Today we're on a voyage of discovery at this new build house which has been provisioned for an electric vehicle charging point using an EV ready wall box. But the question is, what is involved in upgrading that EV ready point to an actual fully functioning type two electric vehicle charging point? Well, we're gonna do a little deep dive for you guys today and show you exactly what's involved. Hit a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already and share it out with somebody else who might benefit. Let's get into the video. So we're here in the Cambridgeshire countryside and our customer has contacted us because they've bought this lovely new house and they've already got this so-called EV ready electric vehicle charging point, but it's not a proper electric vehicle charging point. It is what we call an EV ready wall pod, essentially. This one's by Rolex, other brands do exist, but basically it's a point that's been provisioned to be out upgradable to a proper electric vehicle charging point in the future. So at the moment, all it's got is a single 13 amp socket outlet in the front of it and then an RCD. The idea behind these points though is that they should be easy to upgrade to a proper mode 3 electric vehicle charging point in the future where you can plug your vehicle in with a proper plug and charge it at 7 kilowatts. So the question is what's involved? How have they wired this up? What is inside? And can we upgrade it to a smart charger? or are we stuck with a dumb charger? All of that is what we're gonna get into right now. So the first thing we need to check is inside the house consumer unit, what size circuit breaker has this been fitted to? And what size cabling have they used? Because that will enable us to know what size charging point we can upgrade to. Let's go inside. We can see straight away as we open this one up that we have a circuit labeled vehicle charger. So that's a good start because any electric vehicle charging point should be on its own dedicated circuit. The rating of this circuit breaker though is a little bit worrying because it's on a B16. So it's a type B 16 amp circuit breaker, which means that in its current form, that circuit can only supply up to about 3.6 kilowatts of power. So what we're gonna need to do is take the cover off this consumer unit to see what size wiring they've actually installed from here to the charging point. And that will tell us whether we're able to upgrade this to a higher power circuit breaker, which could potentially supply a seven kilowatt charging point outside. So straight away, I can see from having the cover off, we've got good news. This is a four millimeter squared conductor, which can conduct up to 32 amps of power, which means that we will be able to upgrade this circuit breaker if we want to, to a 32 amp circuit breaker and therefore fit a seven kilowatt charging point on the outside of the house, which is really good. Because if the customer was limited to 3.6 kilowatts, it kind of makes it a bit pointless upgrading from a 13 amp plug to a 3.6 kilowatt charger. So now we have two options. We can either use Rolex and upgrade to their proper EV charging point, which is the exact same box that's on the wall there, but with different insides, but it's a dumb charger. It doesn't have internet connectivity and all that kind of stuff. Or we could upgrade to a smart charging point like a Hypervolt or a Zappi or an Anderson, but that will involve adapting the existing wiring and potentially moving the circuit from the non-RCD side of the consumer unit to the RCD side. So let's talk about those two options and how we would go about it. So in this consumer unit, we have a type A RCD, which is very good. That means that if we wanted to install a Hypervolt, we could install it on this spare circuit way, put a 32 amp circuit breaker in there, and then just remove that wire from there and put it into there, reuse the existing wiring that's going outside. We've also got something missing in here, which is surge protection. And with the new 18th edition of the wiring regulation, surge protection is required in the second amendment that's just come out. So we will need to retrofit a surge protection device, either in the consumer unit or in the meter box. Now, interestingly, it looks like they've wired it in armored cable, but I see no evidence of the cable actually being glanded properly into the board. It is a three core armored, but it looks like they've probably just tucked it in the wall here and not actually properly glanded it. I'm not too worried about that, especially if it's glanded properly at the other side, but we'll see when we take off the charging point. Let's go there now. Oh wow, oh my goodness, <gasps> look at that, no way, oh so bad, 
Right, welcome to the joy of new builds where shocking discoveries are just around the corner. This is absolutely ridiculous. That armoured cable has not been glanded properly as I secretly suspected when you might have heard my slightly tongue-in-cheek comment when I was inside. They've not glanded it in properly, they've literally slung the cable in the back. There's a massive hole, it's not sealed, so they've not preserved the IP rating of this case. They've glanded it loosely like that in the back, but it should be glanded into the casing in some way, not just inside. And the problem with doing it this way, the new type two charging point that we need to install inside here is actually gonna take up a lot more room here. And there's no way that we'll actually be able to fit that in with the way that this armored cable is currently glanded. So that means that we're gonna have to basically re-terminate this cable in order to actually fit a proper electric vehicle charging point on here. If they'd just done it properly in the first place, then it would have been a lot easier for us to do the install upgrade. So this black conduit running down the wall here contains a green and yellow wire, which is for an earth electrode. And basically that's because the regulations require you to either have an earth electrode for an electric vehicle charging point or to have what's called a pen fault detection device. We usually just fit very clever charging points that have pen fault protection built into them, but these very rudimentary charging points don't have any of that. So the only solution is to stick a copper bar into the ground with an earth wire connected to it. It's basically a copper rod that is bashed into the ground that has contact with earth and it creates a true earth connection. So in summary, the options are either we can swap out the guts inside this for a proper Rolex electric vehicle charging point which will fit in this same box. The disadvantage of that is that this cable, how it's been installed, we're gonna to need to fix that. So we're gonna to have to partially rewire this in order to tidy it up and make it all work properly and safely. The other option that we could do is remove this whole box completely and fit a smart charging point that has all the safety features built in. That means that earth electrode is not needed. We would have Wi-Fi capability with the charging point. You'd have all the functionality like being able to monitor how much electricity you've used on each charge, being able to digitally lock it off so that not any old person can just rock up and charge it. But that means obviously that this case is kind of redundant and we'd need to just rip it out and start again essentially. So as you can see, it's not always as simple as it might seem having an EV ready wall pod. There's a lot of things that need changing in order to get it up to the standard that we want. So make sure that you get somebody to do it properly. And if you're in our area in Cambridge, obviously we'd be happy to help. But either way, I hope this video has been of interest and benefit to you and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.